Herzlich willkommen im Kino des DFF. Es ist mir wirklich eine große Freude, Sie heute Abend hier begrüßen zu dürfen. Mein Name ist Gabi Babic und ich werde sozusagen den Abend etwas moderieren. Wir feiern heute Abend die Kinopremiere von Gospod Postoi Imetoie Petrunia. Gott existiert, ihr Name ist Petrunia. Und äh, der Abend hat mehrere Rahmungen. Die eine ist eben diese Kinopremiere. Jip Film und Verleih bringt ihn in die deutschen Kinos. Und äh, jetzt startet quasi eine Tour auch mit der Regisseurin und Crewmitgliedern durch Deutschland. Die andere Rahmung ist äh, Remake on Location. Ich selbst mit meinen beiden Kolleginnen Carola Gramann und Heide Schlüppmann, die auch heute Abend hier sind von der Kinothek Asta Nielsen. Wir machen dieses Jahr zum zweiten Mal Remake, Frankfurter Frauenfilmtage. Die starten am 26. November, also relativ bald. Und wir nutzen eben verschiedene noch Foren oder Formate. Remake on Location ist so eine Art, wir könnten sagen, warmlaufen äh, oder einstimmen aufs Festival. Und in diesem Rahmen eben beteiligen wir uns als KooperationspartnerInnen heute Abend auch hier. Die weiteren Kooperationspartner sind die Heinrich-Böll-Stiftung, das DFF, in dessen Namen ich auch sehr herzlich begrüßen möchte, hier im Haus als GastgeberInnen. Dann auch das Internationale Frauenfilmfestival Dortmund-Köln. Und wir hatten die Freude, vorher, vorhin, an einem Netzwerkevent teilzunehmen mit der Regisseurin Teona Mitewska und der Produzentin und Darstellerin Labina Mitewska, die so die Dramaturgie später begrüßt werden. Und äh, es gab eben dieses Netzwerktreffen, das war organisiert von WIFT äh, Frankfurt. Das ist die Abkürzung für Women in Film and Television, also ein Branchen, eine Branchennetzwerkinstitution und der Wirtschaftsförderung der Stadt Frankfurt. Der, die die Kinoauswertung oder der Verleih dieses Films hat auch eine Schirmherrschaft. Und ich darf vorlesen ein kurzes Grußwort der Schirmherrin. Das ist die hessische Ministerin für Wissenschaft und Kunst, Angela Dorn. Liebe Freundinnen und Filmfreunde, liebe Filmfreundinnen und Filmfreunde, Entschuldigung, mit dem Film Gott existiert, ihr Name ist Petrunia, präsentiert uns die nordmazedonische Regisseurin Theona Mitewska einen großartigen, direkten, aufrüttelnden Film. Sie entlarvt die Frauenfeindlichkeit, die oft von patriarchalischen Normen in der Gesellschaft getragen wird. Zu sehen, wie eine junge Frau gegen die männliche Herrschaft in ihrem Dorf aufbegehrt, macht klar, dass viele Frauen noch immer weit entfernt sind von Gleichberechtigung und Fairness. Diese Botschaft ist wichtig, ebenso wie es wichtig ist, feministische Produktion zu unterstützen. Deswegen habe ich gern die Schirmherrschaft für die heutige Filmpremiere übernommen. Ich freue mich, dass wir mit unserer, unserer hessischen Filmförderung dazu beitragen konnten, Gott existiert im Namen des Petrunia in die deutschen Kinos zu bringen. Ich wünsche Ihnen eine, interessant, eine interessante Filmpremiere. Ihre Angela Dorn, hessische Ministerin für Wissenschaft und Kunst. So viel von der Ministerin. Und ich darf äh, jetzt begrüßen die Leiterin des äh, Festivals äh, Dortmund-Köln, des Internationalen Frauenfilmfestivals Dortmund-Köln. Herzlich willkommen, Maxa Zoller. Weil der Film hat eine veritable Festival sozusagen schon Karriere hinter sich und ihr wart Teil davon. Und ihr seid, seid aber auch, wir nennen euch, also Carola und Heide, wir haben uns angewöhnt, euch das äh, Internationale Frauenfilmfestival Dortmund-Köln als Schwesterfestival zu bezeichnen, dem wir uns verbunden zur Seite stellen. Und äh, genau, du wollt, willst dann Großwort sprechen am Pult. Liebes Publikum, ich habe noch ein paar Worte äh, zu sagen, die mir aber dennoch äh, sehr wichtig sind. Ähm, und als der Film die ersten Wellen schlug, und zwar war das bei der Weltpremiere, bei der vergangenen Berlinale, und das mit den Wellen meine ich mehr oder weniger wortwörtlich, weil es gab wirklich Standing Ovations im Kinosaal, da saß ich meine, meine Festivalkuratorin Stefanie Görz, heißt sie, mit so einem ganz sagenden Blick an. Und ich wusste schon, wenn Stefanie diesen Blick hat, dann heißt das, das ist ein ganz besonderer Film. Und recht hatte sie. 
Ähm, es ist ein Film, der sein Publikum auch spaltet, aber definitiv ein Film, der als Musterfilm feministischer Filmpraxis agiert. Denn auch wenn Petrunia nicht immer das letzte Wort hat, sie hat im Schnitt doch immer den letzten Blick. Und der ist meistens auch in die Kamera. Das heißt, dass dieser Film nicht nur in seiner Geschichte, sondern viel weniger offensichtlich, aber doch sehr, sehr wesentlich in seiner visuellen Struktur patriarchale Tradition überwirft. Es war sehr ungewöhnlich bei unserem Festival, das Internationale Frauenfilmfestival Dortmund-Köln, denn ähm, mit einer Einigkeit, die ich so von Festivaljurys eigentlich weniger kenne, entschied sich die Jury für Tionas Film als unseren besten Spielfilm. Und ich möchte kurz ein Zitat ähm, vorlesen, das Statement, das Jury-Statement, ähm, das da hieß, We chose to award this film because of its, its excellent in conveying a story of an unemployed working class woman's courage to resist quotidian structures of patriarchy, overcoming her alienation in the course of realizing her power to revitalize solidarity ties for fighting injustice. Und ich glaube, was mich an diesem Statement der Jury am meisten berührte, war diese Fürsprache zur Überwindung der Entfremdung, der Alienation. Denn Entfremdung, damit können wir alle was anfangen, damit können wir uns alle identifizieren. Entfremdung ist die gesellschaftliche Krankheit des 20. und 21. Jahrhunderts. Und Theona macht uns Mut, diese zu entlarven und mit ihr zu brechen. Nachdem die Jury den Preis an Theona vergeben hatte, richtete sie das Wort an unser Publikum. Bei ihrer berührenden Rede machte sich Theona leidenschaftlich für die Solidarität unter Frauen stark. Aber ein Satz ist mir im Kopf geblieben. Theona beschrieb den Prozess der Produktion, des Drehbuchschreibens mit der brillanten Elma Tataragic und so weiter. Und dann sagte sie am Ende, und ich bin mir ziemlich sicher, das war spontan, was sie da sagte, sie sagte, dass dieser Film auch für sie einen Weg bedeutet hat, eine Art Erwachen war und dass auch sie am Ende Petronia wurde. Ich kann nicht genau ausdrücken, was sie wohl damit gemeint hat, aber mich hat dieser Satz sehr geprägt und ich habe ihn bis heute nicht vergessen. Eine konkrete Transformation, die rein der Vorstellungskraft entspricht. Eine Solidarität mit und ein Lernen von einer fiktiven Figur, die man selber schreibt. Mich hat das sehr inspiriert. Vielleicht können wir Sie ja heute nach dem Film beim Q&A nochmal nach diesem Satz fragen. Ich danke Gabi, Babet, Carola Gramann und Heide Schlüppmann für die Einladung nach Frankfurt. Ich danke Jip Film und Verleih, dass wir heute den Kinostart feiern können. Der offizielle äh, Kinobeginn ähm, ist am 14. November. Und ich danke Tiona und ihrem Team für einen so einmaligen Film. Ich wünsche Ihnen ein ganz tolles Kinoerlebnis. Danke. Und ich darf erst nach vorne bitten, die beiden Frauen, die ich glaube, es war vor zwei Jahren, den Verleih, Jip, Film und Verleih gegründet haben. Und das ist, glaube ich, der elfte Film, den sie zusammen in die Kinos bringen. Jutta Veit und Julia Peters. Hallo. Hallo. Wir freuen uns sehr, dass wir heute Abend hier Premiere feiern konnten. Dank, bedanken uns bei Hessen Film und Medien, die uns unterstützt haben. Dann bedanken wir uns noch bei den Frauenfilmfestival, die uns auch sehr unterstützt haben. Bei euch bedanken wir uns. Wir müssen uns bei so vielen Film Leuten bedanken. Du machst mal weiter mit bedanken. Wir bedanken uns bei allen. Nee. <lacht> ja, genau. Vor allen Dingen möchten wir uns bei, dem, bei der Heinrich-Böll-Stiftung, bei Herrn Zwengel, bedanken. Wo ist er denn? Hallo, vielen Dank für die Unterstützung. Ja, und jetzt nach der Dramaturgie ist jetzt der tolle Moment, wo ich erstmal begrüßen darf. And I will switch to English now. Uh, please give a warm hand, a warm welcome to the director of the film. Uh, Teona Mitzewska. Ruga Mitzewska, sorry, I wanted to... Sorry.
And Teona, there are two more uh, crew members or people you made the film with. And yes. you, you want to welcome or s say their names? Yes, there is uh, uh, Labina Mitevska, my sister first, producer. And she's actually, she's the journalist in the film. She painted her hair afterwards. <laughs> And of course, among us, there is the star of the film, Petrunia herself, Zorica Nusheva. weil wir hier so angebermäßig mit dem T-Shirt da sind. Wir haben natürlich für euch alle eins, ihr könnt euch kaufen. Und jetzt schenke ich ganz kurz den Ladies eins. Und dann... Oh, yeah, such a nice T-Shirt. One for you. <lacht> Where's Maxa? In the second row. Ah, genau. And Maxa, you can also join us in t for the yes. Q&A, because now, uh, Teona, uh, we have, uh, and Labina and Zorica, we have plenty of time for, uh, for a talk about your film, and I would like to immediately invite the audience to also to ask questions or to comment on your film. And we will do this in English, and we, we can translate questions if you want to ask in German. Uh, is there a need for, tra tra uh, gibt es uh, Bedarf an Übersetzung, oder machen wir das alles in English jetzt? Auf Englisch, in English. So uh, we had the chance, actually, Maxa and the others, to hear a lot about the becoming of the film uh, before at the event we had um, at five o'clock. But please uh, start to explain uh, the working relationship you have, because we saw at the beginning you have a production company with your sister, but also your brother. In this context, um, you well, are working in and how did you find Petrunia? I mean, not for, for now, not the actress, but the story and the, yes. the background so, of the story. So with Labina, my sister, uh, we, um, well, we grew up together. <laughs> no, but you know, um, I, I often think about this. If I, if we grew up in a sort of normal country like Germany, maybe we would have not worked together. But when I finished uh, school in New York and we were doing our first uh, short film, I came to Macedonia to make it. And it was so... Well, I was the first woman and I was young and I was like against uh, nothing against 50 year old men. But, you know, all the crew were these men, they were looking at me and I said to Labina, Labina, we have to do something. Like, I can't do this alone. And she said to me, you know, I'm an actress. How can I be a producer? I said, I don't know. You have to figure it out. So then we, um, our, our brother, who is a sculptor and painter, became the production designer. He does the decor of the film. And uh, yes, and since then, this happened 17 years ago, and since then we work together. And uh, uh, it's not always easy, but we, you know, we make it work. And uh, and sometimes it's very, actually, most of the time it's very constructive. And sometimes it becomes very personal, but, <laughs> you know, but we, 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 it, on the end, it's all about the art. It's all about our passion. It's all about making a message, about talking about important things. So uh, I, I, I guess... It's all thanks to our mother and father, because they sort of uh, taught us to support one another. The second question about the film, how we came about making, actually it's a true story. Huh? Uh, so five years ago, uh, 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 the real Petrunia uh, jumped for the cross in Stipp, in the same town where we shot the film. Uh, the whole town was outraged. Uh, and uh, she said, listen, I, I swam faster than all of you, and I also have uh, the right to have a uh, lucky year. So basically that was her point. The press in Macedonia was not very uh, sort of uh, reflecting so much about what she did 
basically they reported on the event as something oh a woman jumped for the cross as as a funny funny news you know so labina read the news and she said to me listen let's do something so basically for us it was an opportunity to talk about everything that frustrates us as women living in the balkans and then we found zorica and she agreed with us and we we created this uh, um, beautiful thing but on the uh, on the it was just the start for us that um, in the real life it was she catched the cross and after that of course we said okay it's a great start for the film but can you imagine we talk with her if we put her whole night in the police station and she fights alone against all the system and you see all the devi uh, deviation of on of one society and the whole second part of the film is something which was written and it's it's not the true story which comes through the yes yes basically the, the her act was the 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 starting point and then yes everything you see in the police station uh, we we developed it's a um, sort of dramaturgical development to 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 raise points we uh, dearly and passionately uh, care about Actually, the, the film uh, has these two parts, and it, uh, this uh, second part, which, which is the chamber play, and the first part, you have uh, very beautiful uh, shots and the camera work. But I would like to ask you to maybe elaborate a little bit on how you develop the, the imagery and the, the shots for your film and uh, uh, um, connected to your character because it was very striking to me how you f frame her when she's sitting and all this male world like uh, cut in uh, you, uh, very often you don't see the head heads of the male characters and it's kind of the focus goes on the lower part of the body if you could comment on such decisions or how you developed all this huh. imagery around her you know i love bresson um, and um, um, you know he did a whole film where you don't see the heads I always dreamt that it is possible to tell many things from here down but you know I don't dare to do such a avant-garde film but uh, okay it's a very good point you raise it, there was a joke on the set every time um, when we were in the police station when uh, male actors would come they would say oh don't worry how you look teona <laughs> never shoots your face she suits you from the from the neck down so it was uh, very frustrating for the men in the film but you know what okay it's about time huh? to be a little bit frustrating for them uh, no, but um, uh, and no, no, no. I don't. Uh, I don't want to provoke too much. Um, but um, why not? <laughs> <laughs> but um, the thing is, cinema is visual form. So for me, every frame, it's a painting I make, and I love this work. It's so beautiful. You know, you write a script, you find the actors, you work with them, and then you visually try to incorporate everything together so it is all about mise-en-scene it's about where you put the the camera it's about the colors it's about the framing uh, it's about all this element that mean something nothing is by a chance when you cut a character from here down you don't do it because it looks beautiful no or it looks strange. No, you do it so you make a point, so I make a point, so I raise some kind of sentiment, some kind of emotion, some kind of experience within you. So it, it, it is part of the process, it is a part of the form. And I talk about this because um, uh, I love the form, I love cinema. It is, uh, I love my job. And um, and I think very often we, um, I'm not criticizing, but uh, sometimes we forget 
you know, we make uh, uh, television films, you know, we, you, know, you know, you shoot a scene and you go bam, 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 bam. It means nothing, you know. Cinema is much more than that. So I, I really try to elevate the cinematic form in all of my films because I believe uh, there is magic in it and there is certain something that I think we can all contribute, uh, all can benefit from, benefit from, yeah. Yeah, I was, yeah. I have I have many questions. I could be here until midnight, but I'm just gonna say something about the real story in the newspaper that kicked off the idea for the film. In fact, it wasn't really the story in the newspapers; it was the fact that the media ignored that story, and that your country didn't really open up discussion about this. And I wonder why, if that's the reason why the media gets their own perspective in your film. So every time your wonderful cameraman takes up the camera, we see the scene from his point of view. Whether that's a kind of a message, let's say, to say, look, you know, you didn't shoot what happened, so we will shoot it from our point of view for this film, for, from the media's point of view. And and my second question is, is for you, because I found there was so something about, you know, language belonging to, a loud language become, belonging to the men, uh, the scene where you're being spat at by this guy in the police station, I just felt there was something about, you know, your body just absorbing all the language that you're being screamed at, that's being, you know, thrown at you, and you just, something about you absorbing this. Of course, the audience thinks, oh God, when is she going to explode? You know, how much more can she take? How much more can she absorb? But I was wondering whether that's something that came out of your acting, or that was scripted, or that, you did something spontaneously like that, or you know that that tension between the male logo and language, if you like, and and your your silence and your body, just your breathing. Let's say you know your breathing. <laughs> For this, <laughs> uh, hi. <laughs> Thank you for having me here. It's truly a blessing. Um, so it was script, yes. <laughs> it was written on the script that I have to listen to <laughs> what he's saying. And uh, I think afterwards you, you added some uh, story in it. Do you? Yes. It, I, uh, it, yeah, it's I, I would always surprise her. Yeah. <laughs> um, um, I, I guess uh, spontaneity is was always uh, when we were shooting. It was always part of the shooting. But then it was the script and um, mm, it, is, it was the character. It wasn't like I, I was thinking that uh, she should act like that. So I'm not sorry if I didn't answer your question. Yeah, there you answer my question, yes. Yeah. Thank you. About about the journalist, I we were thinking when we were writing the script, Ona and Elma. You, you, you know, we live in a very strange world. You know, when I was when we were growing up, um, and I'm still, you know, I wake up and I have my coffee with the newspapers. So it's something that we. I know the young generation, they don't do it. But somehow we we grown up in a country, in the world, where you believe in the newspapers. You believe in the messages they are transmitting. And suddenly now we live in the world where you don't believe in anything. Because there are too many news, too many messages. You don't know, you are confused as a citizen of this world. In, in Macedonia, in the last you know, 25 years, all the Balkan in East Europe, we lived through communism, socialism, suddenly capitalism, completely different systems. All the values they were teaching you to, you to believe in one, suddenly nothing of that is, is working, it's something else. So it happened to us that we, the last 15 years we lived in a country which was very closed and the media was completely controlled by the government and by the politician parties. So we were thinking that, you know, putting Petrunia as very educated woman on one side, 
but she cannot find fight alone alone you, you she needs so we were thinking if we put a slavica completely opposite of the reality what happened in macedonia in that time it can give her us more interesting pushing and the story can go more interestingly developed and of course that we were aware that when you are single woman single mother single man and you are finding yourself hundred times in the same situation repeating yourself that the absurdity and fun the absurdity of the situation makes you funny and caricature on moments but is something that it is reality when you fight for something so i don't know i think it's we really deeply thought how to present and how to make the contrabalance and balance between two of them when we were creating these two characters. Yes, and we believe in this kind of journalist who fights for what she believes in, who fights for truth, who fights to get the truth out. And in a way, the character of the journalist, it's... Um, gives points to Petrunia. There is a very strange connection between them, but she's giving her the key of her future actions. So this uh, uh, sisterhood between us was also a point that we it was important for us to to put forward. Excuse me, did you, uh, also congratulations for this wonderful film. Did you... Uh, <laughs> Were they all the males, were they volunteers or did you have to pay them to play these ugly characters? And Extras. <laughs> extra. And the second question, why, uh, why so many close-ups? I haven't seen a film in years with so many close-ups. Really, I'm sitting in the first row, it's even, it's even more thrilling to, to, to look in, in, into the very face of, of almost every character, which was almost uh, a, bit, a bit exhausting. Um. Uh, yeah, uh, well, you know, uh, the, 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 the characters are uh, mostly actors, but the full, the, the group of men are extras that we combined with, um, um, uh, with also uh, students of acting and some actors. So there was a combination of, uh, and no, no, they, they were very willing. Huh? <laughs> Uh, uh, many people for Stipe, many, all of them. Well, and some few not, but many, many, many people from Stipe. Actually, that was our idea, you know, to incorporate also the real town within the story. Because when we came to Stipe, they were very hesitant to co cooperate with us. And then it took us time, and by the end of the, uh, by the end we shot the film, uh, half of Stipe was somehow uh, involved with the film, you know, either as an extra or uh, providing services or working on the set. Um, so many close-ups, you know, I just felt I wanted to irritate you. <laughs> yes, I really wanted we have to, 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 you know, because... Uh, know the choices we make for me it's all mathematical it is all about um, um, how you shoot a scene you choose how to shoot a scene but also scene is part of uh, the whole and it's all about the uh, the life of the film you know the the way the film breathes of of course that's also editing but uh, so I don't know it felt true to me and I'm actually sorry if it irritated you so much. But you know what? I will tell you one truth. Casavete said, it doesn't matter what you feel when you leave the cinema. What is important about a film is if you remember something 10 years later. You will remember the clock. <laughs> yes. No, but it's easy. I just want to, for the, our third film, there are no close-ups at all. So people are saying, why you make these long shots without any close-up? So I think for each film, Teona really 
make a very deep research in her visual style and what she wants to say. And I think... Ich habe eine ganz andere Frage und Sie müssen das übersetzen. Ähm, ich habe den Film das zweite Mal gesehen und während ich beim ersten Mal voll auf die Geschichte mit dem Kreuz und Männer und Frauen und drauf gerichtet war und das gut fand und lustig fand und politisch fand, habe ich diesmal eine ganz andere Geschichte gesehen. Ich habe fast atemlos den Mutter Tochterkonflikt gesehen und diese Double Bind Geschichte und bin also wirklich erschüttert, weil ich beim ersten Mal das überhaupt nicht so wichtig genommen habe, wie ich es diesmal nehme und wollte eben darum fragen, in Mazedonien, ich meine, es gibt das Problem auch bei uns, aber ist es ein sehr typisches Verhalten Mutter, Tochter Should I translate? I'll translate. Um, I, I totally understood. Huh? <laughs> ah. But Labina and <laughs> the, first, the, the first time this lady watched the film, she was focusing on the main story of the cross and so on. And now she saw the film a second time. She was deeply, deeply moved and shocked by the mother-daughter relationship. I mean, she was actually disturbed by it. She felt it was very shocking. And so her question is about that. Whether that's that's the case in Macedonia or not? No. Uh, well, um, I think um, uh, the relationship between uh, the mother and daughter it it is about the generational divide. It is about uh, different generations. Um, this uh, the mother. She's part of a generation where she uh, she knows nothing better than to feed the the her uh, patriarchal upbringing and uh, petrunia through her education manages to liberate herself from this um, so the mother in a way is a victim of uh, her situation but also a victim she unfortunately um, contributes to this situation um, uh, w would this be a, 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 a typical situation? No, nothing is typical, you know. Like, uh, uh, my mother is not like this at all. Huh? She's not, but uh, I know many mothers who are, huh? and I know many mothers who are, uh, and many young women who are, uh, who have not... Uh, realized uh, the power they possess and uh, the possibility they have to 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 define themselves differently that than what society uh, requires from them um what left me kind of puzzled i'm really not quite sure what to make of it is the um, bigotry of two of the main male characters because both the Pope or whatever the official word for it is and the uh, chef of the police are very undecisive or unclear in their position because it's the Pope himself who at the river says, but she won the cross. Later he goes to the police. It's the police. It's the chef of the police. He says, "But actually, we we are no legal grounds here." But they they comp both men completely um, are in between positions. And I was maybe I'm talking with prejudice here because I have to say that somehow I expected them to react more clearly and um, conservative and aggressive. And I think much of the story, specifically in the second half, is possible because they are very unclear in their position. But I'm not a, I really did not understand 100% um, the choice for these two characters. Well, you know, in real life, nothing is clear. We question everything. 
We question if we should go right or left. We question what is true, uh, uh, what is not. Uh, yes, we do. Well, me, I believe that 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 human nature. I don't believe there is bad or good. I believe that we all react. Uh, sometimes uh, we all react to situations the best we can, uh, given the conditions that are given that are that surround us. So, for example. Uh, the the because by the law by the church law uh, nowhere it's written that a woman can jump so the priest says uh, it's hers but then by the force of his environment the locals he says no it is not hers because I have to satisfy the uh, the, the the need of my people uh, the policeman he's talking about the law but then there is corruption. Then there is his friend who also has influence, which is not law. It is all about brotherhood and being neighbors and living in the same city. And he says, oh, let's find a solution together. So um, I wish things were clear. I wish we could. Uh, I wish the law would be the law and the rule would be the rule. But in real life, it's never like this. And, you know, if I would have made this character, as you suggest, nobody would see this film. <laughs> you know why? Because we don't want cliches. We don't want cliches. And human nature is much more complex than that. And that is the beauty of human nature. People are not bad or good. Oh, well, there are some really bad people, huh? I, uh, but, you know, we all have both. Well, I certainly do. Huh? Meine Frage bezieht sich ein bisschen auf die Mutter Tochter, deswegen würde ich gerade deutsch-mazedonisch machen, wenn es in Ordnung ist. Ja, ähm, also ich habe sehr viele Parallelen gesehen, auch wenn in einem anderen intellektuellen Kontext, sage ich mal, ähm, weil ich mit einer Frau zusammenlebe, was in dem Land leider äh, nicht gut ankommt und ich habe gerade eine emotionale Berg- und Teil oder als sehr auffüllender Film auch für mich, nämlich diese Widersprüche zu sehen von ähm, Lügen, äh, Korruption, äh, dann aber wieder diese äh, Gottesnähe äh, darzustellen, also das, das macht einfach keinen Sinn und wenn man mittendrin ist, noch weniger. Ähm, Прекрасен филм. Эм, моите родители се од Скопје, јас живеам со жена и эм, имам се големи проблеми со, э, со сето тоа што го видов и сега во филмот. Едно е тоа мајка кирка э, релација, другото е дека од една страна э, лажење, кра, э, крадење, э, э, псување, све, сето тоа е э, некако во ред. I u isto vremenu isti te ti luge što svi do toga prat se smatra za mnogo religiozni. I zato za mene biše mnogo intenziven film od pošto te mnogo paralili. Tako da mnogo dobro go prikažav te, to vsakam da kažem. I što mi interesira kako je recepcijata na film od Makedonije, da li nešto se menilo? Die letzte, äh, ja, der let, die letzte frage war, wie die reakcijone in Macedonien waren auf den film und ob sich etwas ändert. The, uh, we released the film um, in Macedonia after the Berlin, I think it was in March, and, and um, uh, the, the reactions were good. Of course, nobody's happy when um, s you criticize so much the country, but um, uh, it was good and we believe that something has changed because this year um, the woman really jumped and catch the cross and the church didn't ask her to give it back. So <laughs> I guess um, I guess in, in it, it, is, it is a big change. Huh? It is a big change because um, I was telling uh, before the anecdote when we start shooting the film we approached the church because we need to make the research for the main actor, for the Pope. And when they heard the name of the film, they said, you know, we appreciate you very much, but we don't want to have anything with you. 
Um, and I said, but why, you know, we are artists. They say, you know, because God exists and it's a man, for sure. <laughs> so, and, I, and, and they were convincing me for 20 minutes on the phone not to make this film in Stipp. I said, but we already decide, it's a foreign, we are here, we, he, he said, but you know, we have this, uh, this town has a trauma after what happened. For two years, I had a trauma, and it's the main guy in the church, you know, it's the, in, I said, but you know, we are artists and we need to provoke and we need to, how we will change the society if we don't speak openly about things and things needs to be changed. And he said, go to other town, shoot in other town. So of course he put the phone down and after that we didn't have the communication, but they give this year, they give the, the cross to the woman and they didn't ask it back. So I think it's a big change. And the actual woman who jumped for the cross five years ago, now she lives in uh, London. It would have been funny if she lived in Frankfurt. <laughs> Ich wollte mich kurz meine Vorrednerin ähm, noch anschließen. Ja, es ist mich so zu Gruppe, das ist ein guter Film. Ähm, und würde noch mal kurz auf Deutsch noch mal umswitchen. Ähm, die Frage wäre eigentlich, was Sie eigentlich schon längst beantwortet haben, ist, was aus der, Recht, also aus der reellen Petrunia geworden ist und was sie von dem Film hält. Ich sage mal, dass wir Prasch haben, der Kutsche Glenn Rekow, der nicht so nicht so nah ist, dass Petrunia zwar noch postuell ist, Сега вие рековте дека отишла или се пресели во Лондон. Како фидбек имате добијан он од нејзе за филмот? Дали она го има гледано? No, unfortunately I have uh, no contact with uh, the actual person. But, but we didn't make a contact by, by purpose. Because on the beginning we were, when we, when we wrote the script, we were discussing a lot with Teona and with Elma, with the script writer. If, because if you contact the person and you make interviews, it becomes documentary or becomes a film about her life. And it takes you completely somewhere else. So our decision was very clear from the beginning. We were inspired by this brave woman, but we want to speak about very complex society through her, we want to speak about injustice, we want to speak about this world, we want to speak about lo local story, but it's a universal story, because all of us, we feel injustice. So it's a, it's a choice which you need to make. You, can, you cannot go in between. You cannot go and ask her and interview her and follow her life and after that turn and say, oh, now we put you in the police station. Of course, she will say, oh, it's not, it was not like that. So we purposely really make this very clear from... But the also we understood by asking around that she does not want... She does not want a contact. I think she went through a very hard time and she keeps her privacy so we respect this and maybe one day we will meet i hope we meet because it's thanks to her uh, thanks to her a woman uh, uh, jumped for the cross this year and uh, and uh, um, they gave her the cross it's thanks to her courage and her act and it's thanks to her we made this film so it's uh, yeah she's the the one so um Thank you very much. And here's another one from Macedonia. So I grew up in Macedonia. <laughs> we are not so many. We are two million countries. <laughs> now I live. <laughs> now I live for 20 years in Germany, but I grew up in uh, most of my youth uh, in Macedonia. And uh, for me, the question was very interesting about the reactions of the two main uh, male characters like um, if they couldn't decide uh, about their position. And uh, for me, one of the very important moment in the film was uh, when the policeman, was it the policeman, uh, said to Petrunia, uh, I wish I was as brave as you are, uh, because I, um, how, it's how I observe and um, feel about the situation, many situations there. There are many brave women and they are fighting. 
And uh, the position of many men are what I could observe is they start to be brave and then they um, they zweifeln. They doubt. They doubt because they are um, they are afraid of um, of the surrounding or the other men uh, uh, of the opposition of, of not being supported. So then they will be uh, in a very bad position. So um, I know very many situations when uh, some men started to support like uh, brave women or uh, fight it against some structures in society and then uh, they were um, attacked by another man and um, if this um, if there uh, is um, critical mass missing of this brave men it is a problem and i hope that uh, that this will uh, change and uh, i think this film is very important because i saw this video some years ago about uh, f with the cross yes well you you you're raising a very important point um it is about you know okay petrunia the women in this film are victims but the men are also victims of this society um and uh, what you say goes along with this so in a way being on the margins of the society is yes, petrunia is perhaps gives her more liberty to actually get out of this prison that the rest of them are in. And for me, this is one of the most beautiful scenes. My favorite scene is when he says to her, uh, I wish I had your bravery. I wish I was like you. Um, um, so it it is, um, you know, it is important confession about... Uh, this man who is imprisoned, who has to be macho, who has to be uh, uh, define himself as a macho man, and he he would like to be something else, but he doesn't have this possibility. So it is a big problem. I don't know how we're gonna get out of it, but we will. Huh? I hope. Yeah. So maybe one last question, or do you feel like continuing? We we have time because there's no second screening. Ich würde gerne auf Deutsch meine Fragen stellen, damit keine Info verloren geht. Und zwar ähm, hat man das Gefühl, dass warum 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 nimmt Petrudia die Hilfe nicht an, obwohl es Personen gibt, die ihr helfen möchten in Form von der von der Rep Reporterin? Und ähm, warum, also es wird ja auch im, in, in der Polizeistation bes besprochen, dass sie zum Glück keinen Anwalt äh, sich holt. Möchten Sie damit widerspiegeln, dass man als Frau in Mazedonien auf sich allein gestellt ist? Oder möchten Sie damit widerspiegeln, dass Petronia einfach ihren eigenen Kampf an dieser Stelle gewinnen möchte? Um, yeah, so the question was that you know, why does Petronia not ask for help or why does she not accept any of the help that's being offered to her? For example, in the in the figure of the reporter um, and in the question that, or in the comment that we hear, you know, thank God he doesn't have a lawyer, um, is that, the question is, is that a representation of the, um, how would you say, you know, the fact that women are not heard or represented in society, or is that a way of portraying the fact that Petronia would like to fight her own fight in her very own singular way? <laughs> Just a moment. So. <laughs> we need to consult. <laughs> uh, How was it? Uh, <laughs> no, I th I think it's um. You know, on the beginning, um, you are confu you are confused. I was last year in Zanzibar, and suddenly from. I was buying some mask, I give hundred dollars, 
he went to change. He comes back with the police and he says, it's fake money. I said, no, I bought from Macedonia, from the bank, Europe. No, you go in the police station. So I'm in a police station in Zanzibar for seven hours, completely confused with my partner. You have all the market came here. So you find in this situation. And you don't, you know, I, I was not even thinking to a lawyer. I was thinking, okay, the tour operator, okay, okay. Blah, blah, blah. after that, they found out that in the hotel, they didn't have the safe, so the, the cleaning lady was. But I think she, on the beginning, she's put in the police station, and nobody, you know, everyone thinks in 30 minutes she will be out. So she thinks, okay, I will be out in 30 minutes. I don't even think that, you know, it will get such a complex. And when we were writing the story, we started very naively. We wanted to, to, to start very naively that, okay, this will finish in 30 minutes. It cannot go worse than worse. But how you go deeper into the relation between her and the priest, her and the police, her and the journalist, you understand that actually is society which everything is connected through the corruption. You know, everything is. So you understand how the more, when the, 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 the prosecutor is telling you, you can be in jail for, blah, 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 you know, you. So I think this is why she doesn't ask for a help on the beginning, because she thinks, okay, this will be easy. It's, I will be out. It's, I, it's yeah, but me, I disagree. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> I think you answered your question when you asked. I think she, she, it's her fight. And uh, she doesn't realize this in the beginning, but as, the, <laughs> as the, the story develops, as she empowers herself, as she understands herself better, it becomes her fight in a way. For me, I like the answer better, but maybe it doesn't make sense. You know, but it's her fight. No? For you? It was yes, and also, <laughs> uh, she doesn't know who she is. In the beginning, she doesn't, yeah. I mean, she comes to her with, uh, she knows that she wants to help her, but uh, she's like, I don't want to be on TV. I uh, just, uh, she, didn't ha she doesn't have the whole picture from the very beginning. She just knows that she has situation that has to fight with. And, and at the moment when it's clear, what she says to her, what to do, that uh, the power is in her, she is in shock in that situation because that scene is after the fight with the man in front of the police. So it's emotional state with uh, the rational thinking, I think many angles. Yeah, she's answering like a true actor. Yeah, she, 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 in a way, she revealed to you a little bit of her process as she was yeah. going. Yes. We have one or two questions. First one is here. Also, ich muss sagen, ich war, fand uh, diese Dialoge wunderbar. Um, deswegen möchte ich auch gerne wissen, wie die entstanden sind. Wer hat die geschrieben vorher? Haben die sich äh, entwickelt in dem Drama? Das ist meine eine Frage. Die zweite Sache, ich habe eine kleine Anmerkung, die mir nicht gefallen hat. Die Mutter-Tochter-Beziehung, das fand ich ein bisschen unverständlich, dass sie Petrunia so schnell so viel Verständnis entwickelt. Das hätte man vielleicht noch ein bisschen vorher äh, entwickeln können. Ich fand den Film wirklich unglaublich gut. All right, so, so there's three things. First of all, this lady really, really, really loves your film. <laughs> She said that several times. So uh, the second part is the dialogues. She really appreciated the dialogues. She thought they were wonderful. How did you develop the dialogue? And the last question was, again, going back to the mother-daughter relationship. She felt that somehow uh, Petronia's um, understanding of the mother and her forgiveness uh, came fast. She felt it wasn't really developed or developed enough.
<laughs> Let me tell you something. <laughs> uh, well, um, uh, yes, the the uh, dialogues is great. Writing dialogues also, it is about working with the actors. It is really collaboration as you write a dialogue and then you do rehearsals and then you go deeper into the character and uh, you find certain secrets and certain details and and then improvisation comes around and then you do some you use uh, magic happens for example the scene between uh, she will not want me to say it but the scene between the mother and the daughter in the police station is a pure Improvisate well. It's not. It was written, but it was also something very personal that happened there on the set. So, and for me, uh, you know, when uh, uh, Petrunia says to her mother, "Do you remember my childhood? When you what happened? When she evokes her childhood, uh, it's a magical moment." And uh, yeah, there was a pure improvisation that happened then. So it is combination of things. I think what is important for a good dialogue is to, yes, to to of course have a good script, uh, have no. But basically, it is understanding the essence of the situation, and then uh, never say what is already said. You know, always go deeper, go further. Uh, um, so um, yeah, we we try to work on that. Um, the the the, uh, the what you mentioned about the mother, um, uh, about Petrunia uh, forgiving her mother too quickly. Uh, I don't know. I mean, it's a. What I. Uh, what yeah. I think it's uh, uh, she didn't have scenes with the mother, but what Petrunia uh, lived in between the fight and uh, the forgiveness of the mother, what she lived, that experience gave her the power to forgive her mother. So the forgiveness comes as a consequence of... Uh, the revelation the of her personal of her journey personal journey and that journey gives her uh, power to understand many uh, characters many possibilities of thinking <coughs> many But I, I personally think I think the the character of Petrunia is so beautiful and so complex because in the film, you you have this privilege that you don't need to show everything. You don't need to 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 see everything. Our the human imagination, our brains are amazing. So I think yes, what she said, it's something that she goes through. And if we show that, if we show all this process of why she forgives her, it would be probably four hours films and probably very boring. So I think like this, it's... Yeah, it would be maybe too didactic. Yeah. Uh, I don't know whether you mentioned it before because I tried to get my XL t-shirt, but I, unfortunately <laughs> there aren't any. <laughs> it's only M and S. But I like the idea not involving... <laughs> I like the idea not involving any lawyer because in the end it's Petrunia's decision to give the cross back. Otherwise, she might one, one might have thought uh, that she was given advice to give it back just to to ease the situation. So it was she was on her own and it was own it was her decision because the Pope needed the cross. She didn't need it at all. She just wanted to have it for the length of the film and in the end she could get rid of it. And a, a lawyer would have uh, really disturbed that that. Uh, situation I think so I, it's, it's not very likely that there is no of course she is an academic woman so she could have known that she's entitled to have a lawyer but she dispensed with and so it was uh, all her decision in the end and that was uh, I think a, a, a good a good move in the, in the both in the script and in the in the final film thank you Thank you. But you know, also you have to put uh, this in the cultural context, you know, of course it's an educated woman, but in Macedonia, 
I think in this situation, I'm not sure if if even I would call a lawyer. It's not. It's not part of. Yeah, we're not there. You're joking with lawyers. We don't use them. <laughs> <laughs> There's uh, more questions. Um, I saw your film a second time um, at the Berlinale, and I like it very much. But um, at the end, I'm at the second time disappointed. The the moment when um, Petrunia gives the cross back to the Pope. Yes, I know that Petrunia doesn't need this cross, but I, for me, what would be a symbol to give it uh, to the next woman? Yes, perhaps for the grandma who was sitting there. That so 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 is a. Sorry, my English is not so good. The patriarch is broken, yes, uh, to, to give the cross to a woman. And the cross also was a symbol for lucky, yes. And so it would be for me in the fantasy more uh, that this system is broken and it goes to another woman who needs this cross. Petrunia, of course not, but this was uh, my fantasy that uh, said so, so at the end I was a little bit disappointed. The you no, know, this is the beauty of film. You should have this fantasy. Why not? You know, we, we you know, uh, to end the film with a very precise ending, it's not a good ending. Uh, I, I can give you food for thought. And uh, Uh, yes, and uh, yes, you, you, you actually interpret it right. She gives it, she doesn't need it. Um, uh, she, could, she could have given it to another woman. I don't know where okay. she would find a woman in the, in the, uh, in the, in the, there was uh, snow. I have to write three more scenes for this. <laughs> you know, but it, it was like the end of the film. I had to finish it. <laughs> At one moment you have to finish. You make the point and you finish. But no, no, why not? But uh, I mean, who needs the cross? Uh, really, does another woman need the cross? No, no. I don't think so. No, but uh, why not? Again, I'm not saying no to your idea. In the sequel. <laughs> Petrunia 2. Petrunia 2, yes. Yes, like a Joker 2, you know, she becomes a <laughs> something. <laughs> no, she could not. Could you play us? No. But of course. <laughs> so, I think maybe before you do Petrunia 2, Everybody here sitting here spreads the word and recommends the film, for yes, the, and yes. This, which can be seen in German cin cinemas from next week on, right? Or to, in, to in, uh, the four, 14th of from the 14th, yeah. So please, please do that. And I would like thank to thank you for being such a wonderful audience. It's rare to have such a clever audience, so thank you very much. <laughs> thank you, thank you, uh, Lavina Zorica and Teona for coming and for being here with us. And let's have a drink together. Yeah. <laughs>